Dr. Mikolaj Rachek, R-A-S-Z-E-K, of Merigenomics, M-E-R-O Genomics, recently put out a three-part series on the potential for the inoculated to shed spike protein. In summary, he discusses exosomes, particles exhaled in breath, and how they can transmit both antibodies from natural infection and spike proteins from inoculation. One study he cites mentions that exosomes coated in spike protein, once inhaled, can diminish antibody response when exosomes are accompanied by actual SARS-CoV-2. Any thoughts? So actually this, uh, A, my doubt- I, I haven't well, seen, like all we're working on is this, this thumbnail. Conjecture, yeah. yeah. Which is a nicely described. Yeah. Um, again, the obstacle with all of these shedding things is the amount that is shed is presumably tiny compared to the amount that the person who is sick or vaccinated has on board. Mm -hmm. The effect should be tiny, and to the extent that we are discussing the consequences of shedding, it is disproportionate. And that disproportionality requires something. You know, viruses are this way. Right. You can shed a small number of particles and give somebody a full-blown infection. Why? Because those particles copy themselves. And so the small number of particles that they picked up from you is not the number of particles that they have. They need to be replicators for, for that part. That story to work requires that they're replicators. Right, which is why I've said a prion mechanism would mm -hmm, be a basically mm -hmm. a contagious misfolding yep. of something. That's a possibility. Um, I will say I don't think that the limit of shedding is spike protein. Mm -hmm. I think the mRNAs, the hyper-stabilized mRNAs are... Well, if they're being shed, then they are potential replicators. Yeah, they... I mean, they're designed to be in their original formulation. Not themselves, Not the but to, to move in the, into and, and yeah. then replicate. I don't know. They've been stabilized, and we've seen some evidence that they can uh, work their way back into DNA. But again, none of these things should be happening at a high enough rate yeah. for detectable phenomena to happen. So there's something mysterious going on. But the, the conjecture here that, or, or maybe it is a description of a result that we cannot right. validate, is that the presence of spike protein in the exhaled water droplets is um, an obstacle to the immunity, either vaccine-induced or natural immunity, to mm -hmm. SARS-CoV-2. This m matters a lot. Now, I don't know that the amount that is exhaled by anybody is enough to substantially affect how much immunity there is, but the mechanism is obvious. The, you inhale the spike protein, a certain number of the antibodies that would ordinarily bond to the viral particles will bond to these spike proteins that aren't connected to anything, mm -hmm. and they will be busy, right? It's right. like, you know, cops detained giving traffic tickets when there's a bank robbery right. or something, um, or like a riot, right? If uh, the cops are detained by a natural disaster, right, it means that there are fewer cops to enforce regular laws, and so people will break them. Um, the, I didn't suggest that for exhaled spike protein, but I certainly did suggest that for the vaccinating of people who had natural immunity. One of the reasons not to do that is that you will decrease the effectiveness of that natural immunity by detaining ah, the yes. antibodies and presumably T cells that are targeted at actual SARS-CoV-2 as they are involved in fighting um, cells that have- That objection this. would weaken the longer it had been since you had COVID, though. right? The more time your immune system had already had to act on building your natural immunity, um, the less risk of detaining your immune system on one thing when it should be doing the other thing applies. No, I don't think so. I think that if you have natural immunity that is still effective at some level, mm -hmm then sending it particles or things that will create particles that will call its attention is always bad. To the extent that your natural immunity prevents you from coming down with cases of SARS-CoV-2 that you would otherwise but come it's down not, with. But if, it's already, if you've already got immunity, if you've already got your natural immunity, 
Um, the risk isn't that those things are being detained when what they should be doing is building your natural immunity. No, no, it's not a question of building your natural immunity. They should be surveilling your system so that if SARS-CoV-2 shows oh, up, okay. that it doesn't get through. Okay, it's about surveillance. Okay. If you occupy them with phonies. Um, some some new some new COVID could show up and, and uh, you might be less likely to find it or it would take longer and then you might get sicker. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you could get sick where you wouldn't otherwise get, which mm -hmm. is why the bullshit where they treated people who had been vaccinated but hadn't had two weeks of time to develop a full response are treated as unvaccinated when in fact the point is, what's the net effect? Well, you may have depressed their immunity for two weeks before you got any benefit right and so no i thought you were actually gonna that for sure but we heard several stories of um and i never saw it in any news reports but we heard several anecdotal stories of people who had been sick enough with covid or with something else that they had been hospitalized um but it's the sick enough with covid part of this that that is just enraging and that upon being well enough to go home they were told over and over and over again now you need to get vaccinated yeah like, what? no, st stop that. Yeah. Like, let your body do what it needs to do, at least first, even if, you know, even if safe and effective, let your body do what it needs to do first. Yeah. Vaccinating people with a novel platform. Even yeah. if safe and effective was my, was my, like, like even absent all of the, like, very real concerns uh, that are, you know, even, even more real and bigger than we ever thought. Um, but still, you know, you don't. Oh, you're finally well enough to go home. Let's let's suppress your natural immune response here. <laughs> Bye. Yeah. Let's see you later. Soon. Sooner rather than later, maybe. Oh, here is an update. Uh, this is going to be from uh, something that happened in our private Q&A last week. We heard at the very end about um, a woman whose friend's son had ended up in the ICU with a heart event and was doing very, very poorly. Um, update. My friend's son made it. He was in the ICU for four days, but he is on his way home tomorrow. He was diagnosed with myocarditis, brought on by rheumatic fever from a strep infection. Weird, since rheumatic fevers are very rare in the developed world. Thank you for all your thoughts. P.S. He did have the Pfizer booster in February. So glad he made it. Yeah, absolutely. So glad.